What is good? We're back. Jay Wayne was struggling with a fresh pop, but it's a, it's a good one. I it's cut my fingernails. It's a good one. No, oh, that's always a rough first. Never pop. a good time to pop. No, uh, but we got a we got a fun one for you today. We got some uh, rookie running back and wide receiver rankings. <laughs> <laughs> post combine but we're gonna we got a, a, a guest on for you today and we're gonna look at it a little bit more through the analytical lens and and you know kind of the top 10 or so of, of wide receivers and running backs so we're continuing our offseason theme of normalizing spreadsheets right. baby we're gonna normalize the spreadsheet uh we got our we got a, a guy nick from football insights f ball underscore insights on twitter good follow a lot of uh very interesting information very analytical background. Uh, how you doing, Nick? Appreciate you coming on. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. Uh, great, great. Is there anywhere else where we could find more of Nick? <laughs> totally, yeah. So if you go to my Twitter page, at football underscore insights, all lowercase, um, you can find a sub stack in the bio. And that just has some a uh, little bit more elaborated explanations on some of the data I find or pull and I'll tweet about. You can find the sub stack at... Um, at football f b a l l insights dot substack dot com, so just kind of a uh, carryover from what you may see on the public profile, and it's mostly all free, and uh, just kind of giving my thoughts and opinions, and yeah, yeah, a lot of good stuff it. on there, and and, totally. a, and a good Twitter follow, so make sure you're you're doing that. So um, obviously, you're going to be our resident analytical lens tonight so <laughs> i very much appreciate that J jb's gonna be like they're cheating on me yeah yeah for sure <laughs> um all right so let's would you prefer to start on the running back or wide receiver side uh we could start on the we're going running backs first i think yeah so we can go running backs let's perfect do it. perfect all right so well, i'll kind of tear mine up which won't get us too far because i feel like you know, there, I got a, we got a big problem here at one tier, uh, a, a log jam, if you will. But we'll start with Bijan one, right? I mean, we're not we're you're good with Bijan one. Totally. Yep. Okay. Yeah. With you. <laughs> if you were if you were super flex uh, one one, is there any way after Anthony Richardson did what he did that you are taking Anthony Richardson or any quarterback one one over Bijan? I think that would have to wait until after the draft. Mm -hmm. I think both of those guys, um, I think running back is a position from a high level point of view. Uh, it's a position that's a little bit more dependent on the environment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you see some of the top running backs that have gone and, and quote recent years, guy like Saquon Barkley, you know, he was going to a tough situation in New York and mm -hmm. you can't get behind a, a log jam of a line if that's the, right. the scenario you're in. So like you never know where they're going to end up, but if Anthony Richardson were to go to a team similar to what Baltimore did with Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. where they were building things around them, they have a head coach like Harbaugh who's special teams uh, oriented, very focused on the details. That was kind of a one-off situation where he hit yeah. the ground running. Right. I think he was, what was he, QB4, QB5 in that draft class yeah. in terms of like where he was picked and right, like right. was easily the most productive. So like I think that matters with Anthony Richardson versus – let's say a team like Seattle were to pick him and he's sitting behind the newly signed Geno Smith. Right. He might not be playing right away. So like, that's the stuff that I think about coming a little bit less of a fancy perspective into sure. it. I think that like those externals will matter, but yeah. as of now I'm right with you, Bijan uh, one, one. Those are, those are my sentiments on Richardson uh, pretty much, uh, Verbatim. You so can if see you wanna... taking Richardson over Bijan. No, no, no. no I'm just saying kind of what he was, draft? what he was saying. No, I'm taking Bijan pretty much. All day, every day, um, regardless. I think um, now that I, could that could the scales could tip some, one way, but it would really have to be something that I really really liked. Um, totally. But uh, you can. We did a post combine uh, reaction. I, I I talked for a minute about Anthony Richardson. So if you want to hear how I feel about how, it, you how did Richardson do at the combine? Uh, I mean, I don't even did, did, he, did he even perform? <laughs> he did there? he go? Was he, <laughs> he broke it. I think they stopped after yeah. he he ran. Yeah. They, yeah. they they canceled it back for next year. All right, yeah. cut. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> we saw what we needed to see. All right, so Bijan tier one by himself. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that's kind of high. And then Gibbs in tier two, or is Gibbs in a tier with Bijan, or isn't Gibbs not there at all? Uh, I think Gibbs is like a tier below, mm -hmm. but I think he's the uh, RB two in the class. Uh, sometimes you don't have to overthink it, and um, I think that he's one where if you're drafting these running backs high, 
um, in your drafts. Like sometimes you just don't want to miss. Mm-hmm. And guys like Bijan and Jameer Gibbs, like you're not highly a high likelihood you're probably not going to flop. So. so, so the BMI isn't a big deal for you there. Not too much. Um, I haven't really looked into the BMI or too much of the metrics with the running backs that have the wide receivers, but um, just kind of looking at the receiving production there and comparing sure. it to some of the running backs of the past. And I think that that's something that just lights up your eyes and the yeah. modern NFL. And I think that that just ironically, like they're running backs, but when you have the receiving upside, that's the floor that you get in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you know, they can be out there for, you know, late down situations. They can get catches, not only carries, you know, it's kind of like a gift that keeps on giving a guy like Austin Eckler is an extreme example. Sure. But, I mean, that's the know. perfect role and usage right. of a, a Gibbs. You mentioned um, ecosystem a little bit with Bijan. Is there an ecosystem that would make you drop Gibbs out of that two spot? That would, I think that depends for sure. Um, I think if you're going somewhere where you're, like let's say he were to end up in Miami where Tua is really just hammering on passes to the wide receivers and he's throwing it far downfield. Like that's an offensive environment where it may not be as uh, conducive to his strengths versus, you know, this probably won't happen, but just for the sake of example, he were going to get drafted by, I don't know, the chargers. Right. And day two and Austin Eckler were to go down, he gets that full-time role. Then that's just like a home run pick, but obviously you can't predict that. And that's an extreme example, but it's kind of just, finding the end points and then working your way in. And that's yeah. why I think the draft matters a ton with that, sure. s- with that stuff. So agreed. Um, Man, I might be real excited if Gibbs was to Miami because that rushing scheme, they'll figure out, oh, he's going to make two or throw it to him. And then they're going to figure well, some wild yeah. shit out well, over there. What's right. Interesting, yeah. What's interesting about that is, you know, obviously it's kind of similar to uh, that. He comes from a Shanahan style and you know, he, he, attack downfield because that's the weapons that he was surrounded with too. And they didn't but, really throw to the running backs until they got brought in well, that, an elite running back. That's what I'm receiving, saying. Receiver. You know, you never, you were always kind of down on the, the receiving upside of, of a Niners uh, player. Cause they just didn't do it. They did. They did that with other players, you know, setting up, you know, some of the best yak in the, in the league. Uh, but mm-hmm. you know, once once they got a guy like Christian McCaffrey in the system, the whole thing kind of changed. So it'd be interesting, you know. I, they're they're a team who will draft somebody and not jam them. They'll they'll switch it up to hey, this is what this guy does, which is what you need to be. Much like you referenced, you know, the quarterbacks for Anthony Richardson, Lamar. Uh, you know, with guys like Gibbs, you've got to you you've got to draft him with a with a game plan in mind. Um, <clears throat> you know, like a, a place like Buffalo would be. No thanks with mm-hmm. with Gibbs for me. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. Yeah, abs- Yeah, for they, sure. I mean, you have to change your entire offense when right. you get that in there from a scheme perspective. And so, like, you just think of the matchup and the relationship there for, you know, Josh Allen's their quarterback to stay. He's right. not going anywhere right. bearing injury. So that offense isn't changing up. I'm right with you. Right. Um, all right. So Gibbs too. So I'm moving to a new tier now. I'm leaving Gibbs by himself and I'm going Charbonnet in a tier by himself in tier three. Um, where do you stand here with the next tier of guys and, and who's in it, how many, that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, so originally before the combine, uh, super high. And if you look at some of the stuff that I had, even before the, the Twitter mob or just kind of the ebbs and flows that you see with the fantasy community with liking certain guys and, and hopping off of them and whatnot, I was really high on Zach Evans and Ty J Spears uh, well before the combine. Mm-hmm. And just looking at their historical numbers, receiving, running, and just kind of comparing their production against the old lines they played behind. Right. And I really like that. Uh, that being said, Zach Charbonnet's numbers uh, from the combine and just his sheer size and weight, um, the way he moves, I think that he's just, I think he's a bulldog. I think that uh, Charbonnet is my uh, three. Okay, so Charbonnet's a three by himself, or has, has Spears stayed up there? Did Evans drop because of weight? Um, yeah, I I, um, I haven't really tiered it out as much that way. Uh, Jameer Gibbs and Bijan were up there, and I think that there's a gap. And then the other guys I think you can make cases for. So I got Zach Charbonnet, uh, Tajay Spears, and Zach Evans in that, that tier below. I have them all like hovering around the same area. And Sharb's sort of as an all around, you know, I got him in the tier by himself because I've, 
you need him to be able to get the role. And there's not that many roles of in the NFL anymore, but he, he seems like he could be plug and play. You could get three downs out of him and not be worried about it. He could right. be your guy. Now that does that happen? We don't really know, but I kind of have him by himself with those other guys. Is it, you know, does the weight scare you off with, with Evans? Does, is it, is it, what was the Tajay Sharp love? Was it, you Spears. know, or sorry, <laughs> RIP Tajay Sharp, uh, Tajay Spears, uh, <laughs> You know, was it the receiving? Was it, you know, because, you know, we, we got some of the burst scores, I guess, for for Spears, but we didn't get to see the 40 time. What was it about Spears um, and Evans that keep him up there for you? Uh, with Evans, I'm one of the first things that I did with this running back class, and I'm a little bit more insightful on, like, the wide receivers and the pass catchers, if anything. Sure. But with the running backs, I kind of just cropped it out on, on the pure rushers. The guys like Muhammad Ibrahim and Dwayne mm-hmm. McBride, who are just, you know, they're going to live and die by the ground game. And then mm-hmm. you got the guys like Kenny McIntosh, who on my graphs, if you look, you got the receiving on the Y axis, uh, some of the rushing on the X. And so all the receiving guys are up north. So McIntosh, Gibbs, um, just kind of finding the endpoints, working your way in. With Evans, I found that he was in Spears. They were with Bijan on a lot of the stuff that I looked at. Mm. And that was a balance of yards after contact on the ground, mm. as well as yards per route run in the receiving game. Um, Zach Evans specifically, uh, one of the graphs that I was pretty interested in that you could find in my sub stack, was looking at running backs over the last handful of seasons, going back to like 2018. And I looked at their PFF um, team run blocking grades and then their yards per carry. Mm. And just kind of just plotting that out. And obviously that's going to be a little bit correlated uh, positively. So, I mean, better run blocking is conducive to more success on the ground. And Zach Evans had a few really good seasons relative to some of the blocking experience. And I think, um, I think looking at that and the receiving upside, uh, some of the initial concerns I saw with Evans was just him losing out in the backfield, going from TCU to Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. And I think the guys do that all the time. Sure. Today's day and age. Yeah. And uh, I just, I just think some of the criticism initially uh, didn't hold up to the numbers that I was looking at with Evans. And because of that, I was just kind of riding them. Yeah. And so I, that's why I have those guys up there. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. I was interrupting you. I'm, I, I agree that I think Evans <laughs> Evans was up there with Charbonnet floating around. If we could have got a, you know, some 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 testing to confirm maybe a few things. But then the, the I'm I'm coming in thinking, yeah, he's at 215, 215 and the 202 mm-hmm. was uh, I mean, and he, but he doesn't look. He carries the 202 well. Like it looks, mm-hmm. it, he looks, I thought. My theory is he was cutting weight to run a fast 40. He got hurt a week before the combine, couldn't run and cut the weight. And that was a lose lose mm-hmm. for him. My man just keeps losing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, uh, we had Rob on and uh, Quintoris on Twitter. And he, he actually referenced that's how I, I think that might have been. I don't know yeah. if we were already following. Uh, Nick or not, but Rob brought up a stat that you had about, you know, Zach Evans being number one overall in the percentage of his runs that were explosive. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, totally. And I'm actually, I pulled that graphic up. I think that you're referring to breakaway carries. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Yeah. So that was carries that are 15 yards or greater. Um, and I just looked at this running back class throughout their uh, college tenures, and Zach Evans was um, up there with Dwayne McBride, 12.4%. Yeah. Um, Mitchell right below him, and then uh, just kind of a drop-off and a gradual way down. But Zach Evans, whether it be receiving, uh, yards after contact, and then like some of these metrics, um, I just found him towards the top of the list in this class with everything. And uh, just kind of weighing that with the criticisms at first, that was uh, what had me – put him up there with Bijan, um, up there with Gibbs. Yeah. But then after you said, and some of the concerns coming out of the combine with the size, not running, um, not as in tune with running backs as I am with the pass catchers, but that's sure. obviously something where you, you raise some questions and you look further, you look beyond the data, uh, right. look at some of the intangibles, some of the measurables. And the yeah. Weight. yeah. So, yeah. So we, we have a, we have an Evans breakdown, so I'm not going to jump into my opinion on him and all that. We can go, Watch that. So we'll, in order maybe to, one of the best pure runners in this class. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's basically what you're kind of what yeah. he's illustrating there of, of, you know, what Evans can do is some of the things that you were just saying really pop off the charts. So uh, I agree with you. I got Evans up there, but I'm leaving Charb Charbonnet by himself in tier three. We're going to tier four. Um, Evans is is, you know, 
not quite up in there. So I think I think we'll go back to kind of how pre combine there was it was probably you know Bijan Gibbs Charbonnet and then it was always kind of Evans Tank Tucker was kind of the next three and a lot of discourse between who was where. But now coming out of the combine with Evans, you know, coming out light with. Tucker not really running tanks combine was just okay. Um, you know, we seems like we have a log jam there and now, you know, there's probably three or four other guys up there that like you could, I think all make case for with, with Miller. And I would, I would say Spears next, but you already have Spears ahead of him. Tank Tucker Evans. I think all those guys could be in there. I think you could throw Izzy in there from, from so far what I can tell. And really like I've been loving chase Brown a lot. So Take me through your next couple of guys and the kind of hows and whys of, of what you're thinking. Totally. Yeah. So kind of moving on from Zach Evans, uh, Tajay Spears and Jack's, Zach Charbonnet. Um, Dwayne McBride has really stood out to me. Um, that's one that's gradually upticked. I This isn't necessarily rankings, but just kind of my thoughts mm-hmm. on, on the crop of backs. Um, at first, you know, I saw that a lot of his production was – primarily through the ground and obviously not a power five guy. And a lot of the numbers were spitting out um, Kenneth Walker similarities just from college production and just being pretty predominant on the ground game. Yeah. And at first I was kind of questioning his upside because of that. But the more I see um, some of the data, he's an EPA expected point added uh, workhorse last season. Um, he's another guy where it's like, if he's in the right situation, the bell cow back isn't something that's, you know, coming back anytime soon. Right. Not everyone's going to get in that Derek Henry role, but he's a guy that like, if he gets the opportunities and snaps, like he knows what he's doing um, on early downs. So like, that's a guy that I like. And I think that has um, slowly piqued my interest uh, from a Russian perspective. But I do think that with the guys we spoke about generally, I think that those are like my guys. I think that that top five there, um, Everything I'm looking at at all angles with the data, I think that it really limits their quote unquote bus potential. Um, I think no matter where they end up, they find ways to uh, be productive and just, you know, with any touches they get. I think that's why I like those guys um, up there. Want to ask you about that that stat there, EPA expected points added. Can you can you take me? Uh, I know there's not really any dumb questions, just dumb people, but can you explain? what that is and how you arrive at that. Yeah, totally. Expected point added um, is kind of like introduced in the seventies or eighties. Um, and it basically just takes uh, game context into consideration. So down so? distance, it takes like down distance um, yards to go. So basically if you were to start on a certain yard line and it's first down and you move on the next play, you get to, uh, whatever yard line is five, 10, 15 yards down the field and move the chains or whether it's just going from first down to second down, it takes all the historical um, data and context from those downs and distances and plays and tries to quantify, basically quantifies plays that aren't scoring plays. So if you're moving from the, your first and 10 on your own 30 yard line and you go to the 40 yard line, whatever that difference is and EPA is like what you added and you're expected, the closer you get to the end zone, the more EPA you're adding. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's hard, you know, EPA for rushing is really correlated with yards per carry, but there are guys who get high EPA numbers behind mediocre, considerably poor blocking. And so when you see that it kind of shows that they're moving the chains and and they're uh, getting sick, Sass on the ground uh, relative to some of the others in the so, past. So is is the is the PFF offensive line grade taken into account when you're calculating that? No. So uh, offensive line grade has, doesn't do anything with it. So um, how do you know how good the offensive line was then to make that? Uh, yeah. So I so the offensive line um, I just took their team's blocking grade for that season and plotted it out. So like with the graphic I was referring to earlier, uh, it was running backs from 2018 to 2022 and whatever their team rushing or run blocking grade was, excuse me. I plotted that and then the individual players yards per carry. And there's a correlation there where if you have better blocking, you're obviously going to run better. And uh, 
I found with certain guys that, you know, they're behind inferior blocking and putting up some pretty impressive yards per carry numbers. And then like, that was the basis that I had going into like some of the uh, analysis on this class. So, so, but the, the pass catching for going back to McBride, the pass catching for McBride doesn't, doesn't weight him, you know, out of that top five for you since it's only, you know, five career catches. I know, you know, Kenneth Walker didn't have a whole lot of catches either. And I still had him very highly ranked and loved him a lot with the idea that, you know, I've seen him catch a couple passes and the hands look natural and that he had the ability to do so. They just didn't throw it to him. Does that weigh right. into your decision with UAB of just saying, hey, they don't, that's not what they're not throwing it to the running back. So I'm not worried about the five catches or. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that totally comes into consideration. It's more so as in relative to guys like Spears or Evans and even Bijan who and, and Gibbs, McIntosh, guys who can catch passes, they they give you more outs if some of their their outs are taken away once they get to the league. If they go to a team that they're splitting the backfield in right away, you know, they're either going to be in on early downs or late downs. If Dwayne McBride goes somewhere with a guy that they already have rushing successfully on early downs, how much work is he going to get? Can you rely on him getting that third down work, whether he's being a pass blocker or going out for catches? Right. Just because he, to your point, just because he didn't do it at the college level doesn't mean he can't in the NFL. That's right. totally accurate. I'm more so saying, um, you know, here's what he can do. I think a situation for a guy like that matters a lot because if he's going to get that opportunities, you're pretty, you know, reliant that he can and do that at the next level, at least on the ground. How much, how much will then draft capital then weigh into shaking up a top five? Like, let's say McBride goes in the fourth round. Is he out of the top five? Or is it solely landing spot? Uh, I primarily look at landing spot. In terms of fantasy, I haven't really done the breakdowns. Hey, we get this guy in this round versus right. this guy in this round. Um, I think the difference there at the running back position um, you can kind of just tip your cap to situation in the externals. I think that a lot of the externals matter and um, you get kind of find what guys are good at, at the college level and in the NFL, if they can land somewhere where one, they're going to get as many snaps as possible on different downs, regardless of game script. And if they get one thing taken away and they've got to rush or they got to catch passes with an, a hand tied behind their back, you know, can they still produce um, under those different game scripts? So yeah. Austin Eckler was the example earlier. Right. And I, so I kind of segment those guys out and I say, hey, what's the likelihood that Dwayne McBride's really going to get somewhere where he's the three down guy? You know, in today's NFL, it may not be that high. Right. You know, Zach Evans, Tajay Spears, whether it be rushing or receiving abilities, they're towards the top of a lot of charts that I'm looking at. And in today's NFL, you know, where no matter where they land, you know, bearing they land behind <laughs> sure. some of the top backs in the leagues, you know, you're pretty reliant that they're going to get the opportunities and they're going to produce. So that's kind of like the uh, the filter I have right there. Gotcha. Well, that makes yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense. I'm I'm liking it. So, but no, Tucker at, Tucker doesn't rank up there with any of any, anybody of of note for you. Uh Tucker's Tucker's kind of right there in the middle for me. Uh, mm. Nothing nothing that popped out. I think with these running backs, um, there's so, I'm more. Being an analytical guy, uh, I'm a big passer of the football. Mm -hmm. I'm really into that. And so I might be a little bit biased here. But um, I think that there, it's one of the most replaceable positions sure. in offense. And so because of that, if you're not popping out on some of the charts, the data I'm looking at, you, you get a little bit more dependent on where you land. And so that's why with the running backs, I think uh, where they land matters a lot. And I think that I can shape a little bit more opinions at the position after the NFL draft that makes sense yeah no I, I i completely agree for the most part um so for me personally I, you know after sharps I, I i'm right now i'm probably got chase brown keandre okay. miller uh kind of right right in there there they'd be they they're they're five they're, and six they're basically like four uh, if, I'm, if i'm moving into tier four um i'd go you know miller brown spears i really like them and then I, I just I can't I, I don't know what to do with Evans, Tank and Tucker. Like I like Tank a good bit, but I, I'm not sure I'm throwing him up there. But it really seems like you got to get Sounds landing like George spot. Carlin bit. <laughs> really seems like you got to get landing spot and draft capital to kind of shake these guys out right now. And like, I don't know if I just have a bad taste in my mouth from, you know, Evans and, and Tucker and Tank. Tucker not running. Um, maybe, I don't know if he was hurt or what, but, um, you know, 
that he I wasn't. That he I, that just I, opted I feel, out. I, I couldn't find like anything about Tucker being hurt. I think he just opted out. I've been watching a lot of Miller, Chase, and Spears, and a little Izzy, and so I, I, I right now I got a jumbled up like probably that whole list of guys pretty much in the next tier, and I need a little bit. I need the next step of information to really. Right put those guys in in a really accurate ranking setting but right now miller uh, uh, uh do you not like chase brown uh i like chase brown or uh, miller no miller uh so with chase brown um you know he's a guy that transferred over from western michigan right um senior bowl guy has a ton of production and actually was at the uh Michigan U of I football game this past year. I got to see him in person as well as his brother, Sidney Brown mm -hmm. on the defense and then yeah. Devon Witherspoon. And uh, they put up a show. I mean, that was a great game to see in person. And sure. uh, got they to almost, see they should have won that game. They should have. They were up at halftime. Uh, the they were game up until up. the very end. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like they were shot. Like down a field goal. Totally, Brad, Chase yeah. Brown couldn't get a first down to just ice that game out. Yeah. No, yeah. I would say, you know, like Chase Brown, not not the most powerful runner. I think he can grind no. you. He, he can grind. He can grind you some yards, but his acceleration is awesome. The explosion is awesome. I think the pass catching is is natural, and the threshold I think is 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 in there. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think it was in the twenties this year for pass passes caught. And I know that's a in the analytical world over that twenty plus. Uh, and market share numbers are, are what they're looking for. Um, right. But yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm just kind of scanning here too at some of the uh, data I'm looking at on the ground game and relative to the rest of the class throughout college, Chase Brown had a lot of yards before contact mm -hmm. and something that like signals to me that he might be behind some pretty good blocking. Oh yeah. That other line was definitely good. Yeah. So like I see that and it's like, Hey, like, you know, what can he do after contact? What can he do in the receiving game? And just right. kind of balancing that out. And so those are the questions that I have there. Um, but like right to your point there, um, I mean, he was behind some great blocking and in good situations, which isn't a not necessarily a knock on a guy, but, you know, he's a senior, transferred over from Western Michigan. Those are all the things I think about. And just kind of catering to your previous point, um, the information is, is something that you want more of and you want to look into. So, Right. So what – um. No, no, Izzy uh, or uh, A chain in, in any of your not strong, loving those guys. Strong yards a after contact for for uh, Chase Brown nine hundred thirty five. I I don't know where that ranks, but that, that seems like a pretty large. Yeah, number. yeah, he's got he's got a good amount of sheer volume yeah, there, just and a that's ton of volume. Right. Yeah, two point yeah, eight totally. four yards after contact per attempt. Huh. Yeah. See where yeah. that ranks. Continue though. Yeah. So, uh, so any thoughts on Izzy and A Chain or any other running backs before we switch over to the wide receivers? Uh, A Chain is someone that uh, definitely like piques my interest. I'm looking at the explosive carry rate, and he was right behind Zach Evans, Dwayne McBride, uh, and Mitchell, and he was at 11.4 percent above Tajay Spears in that aspect. Um, with A Chain, uh, you know, he's light box back, um, weight in, kind of light. Five mm -hmm. foot nine. Um, he's another guy right in that middle tier, right in that crop there. I believe he's got a track background, which is pretty sure. interesting. Uh, but again, I think he's one of those guys that I like relative to some of the older backs that may have production um, just from years in college and being behind good offensive lines. Um, guys like Chase Brown or Ibrahim in Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, those guys have a ton of numbers. They've also played a ton of snaps. Right. Chase so Brown like, was second in attempts with 329, but only mm -hmm. 38th in yards after contact per attempt. Mm -hmm. So the volume was helping his total yards sure. after contact for sure. But mm -hmm. plus, like if right. he he's super the accel fast, the acceleration is fantastic from him, and he's definitely kind of a one cut and go. He's not necessarily super shifty behind the line. He will use his patience and then explode, but kind of, you know, I guess he's kind of one speed. Second level elusiveness is, is half decent. Once he's moving, he's, he doesn't have to break down on gear down a whole lot to, to kind of get you on, on the, skates. So the RAS score has an elite explosion grade and yeah. elite speed grade. So you put those two together, it's hard to contact them. Right. When you, when, when you look at somebody like Miller and it's like the completely different game, who's contact balance oh, on yeah. display on right. every play it feels like right 
and not as great acceleration, but I think the I think the actual decent does. speed. But the speed, right? The speed can be pretty good, and the acceleration can be pretty good. But you he know, can get the edge. His manipulation and 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 just kind of moving around and juking and jiving, and then staying up through contact balance is. And he's I think he's a pretty good pass catcher. So he he's he's kind of right up there for me. Yeah, he um, vaulted up. A-, a chain would be another one for me that has to be very um, you know ecosystem dependent somebody needs to draft a chain with the idea of this is exactly a plan of how we're going to use him because he could he could certainly just get lost in in the wash and and be one of those guys in fantasy where you don't know when to play him you play him in your lineup it's fucking two three points you take him out of your lineup the next week he scores you know 17 you know it just seems like there's a lot of volatility in in what a chain um could be or do, but he's certainly a whole lot of fun. Totally. Uh, Probably get a decent discount on him in your rookie draft. I think it's going to be very second. dependent. I think some people are going to jump all over him. Yeah. Especially the if the name, capital's all the right. Name, and the name cachet. Um, but, you know, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. It'd be interesting to see kind of what happens. All right. Uh, anything else? Any thoughts on Izzy before we uh, jump from to the next back, uh, wide receivers, rather? Uh, yeah, we could totally jump on. Okay. Well, real quick, are there any guys that we haven't mentioned that you just got to get yeah. their name out of your mouth? Like Do you have guys a sleeper? Like, like it kind of hit McBride a little bit. Do you have any sleeper running backs that you like more than that that you're, you know, interested in? Um, I think, uh, you know, before the combine and everything, I was really interested in Rashawn Johnson's production mm-hmm. at Texas, even though he's teammates with uh, – Bijan. Number one himself, but um, you know, again, another running back where you don't want to knock a guy for being around the good, the good environment, mm-hmm. um, good system. Why didn't he like, transfer? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like exactly. I mean, that was a guy that jumped out to me. Uh, with the running backs, I have a little bit like less individual takes and a little bit less rankings than some yeah. of the receivers and pass catchers just because of that those environments sure um Crucial so i think like your... you know answer that yeah i totally answer that stuff after the draft but i think like like i said um i think pretty in line with the top five that you guys have yeah. and um just some of the same questions i yeah. mean i think some of those same it's it's i think from a higher level it's pretty fascinating that we have some of the questions even with guys who have a lot of years a lot of snaps under their belt um you know it, it's it's crazy. I think we just think about the NFL too. Like, <laughs> sure. guy like Zeke, guy like Zeke Elliott, like signed that mega extension in 2019, and like the, the Cowboys will do anything to get rid of him at this point. Franchise tag Tony Pollard, who's converted wide receiver. Like right. you think about the position at the next level, and uh, it's not like a tight end where intangibles matter a ton, but you know you got to look at the overall body of work and you say, hey, you know, how many things can you give me? How many hats can you wear? Yeah. Based on a situation and like that raising the floor and and just raising what you can do is going to get you a role in the league and it's going to get you a role in the backfield where coaches like to change it up. Right. Like, right. You know, why Jamal Williams get 100 carries inside the five yard line last year for the Lions? You know, that wasn't because he's the best necessarily the best runner inside the five yard line. It's because might be, the, though, <laughs> he might be. He could be. Could be. But you're straight facts, 17 touchdowns. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, the opportunities, it's divvying up that backfield and yeah. you gotta, you gotta be able to, uh, wear different hats today's NFL. You know, you're not running it too much on early downs compared to the past. So, uh, sure. that's my thought process is there. Um, but excited to move on to the wider series. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I think we'll take that to another video. So if you're, uh, watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like subscribe button, uh, look out for, the wide receiver rankings video we're about to go do. Appreciate you for joining us, uh, Nick. Again, you can find him at fball underscore insights on the Twitters, uh, fballinsights.substack.com for the analytical uh, blog of just a smorgasbord of of information. Um, A good read if you're interested in in that kind of thing. And and we're, you know, normalizing these spreadsheets, baby. I want to know about these analytics and and what's popping off to you guys when you see when you look at the numbers because i'm here telling you what pops off on the film need to know what pops off on the on the on the data as well so appreciate you for joining us and uh, we'll be back with wide receivers peace